Hey YouTube, change these settings now if you're looking to dominate on ranked play when it drops. They will make you so much more prepared, so you're able to perform like this. I might move like a coke, but I'm far from a snake. I say I live in the moment. Got an expensive taste. She try a lot for the money. Uh, oh, know that girl on my cake. Oh my, my chain straight from the ocean. Uh, your chain straight from the lake. Yeah. Slam on her own nail. I do not care how you feel. And all my diamonds they tell. White gold, but your chain still. Why are you so broke? Okay. That's real. I'm strong on the money like nail. Rich like kind of my shoe. Red yeah, bottom yeah, on the bottom of her hill. Um, yeah, we take the top of the farms. Take a top of the shorn. Um, yeah, gonna go to P2. We can just one. Okay, one more, then. One right side. Okay guys, so for the horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity, I've gone for 7.7. Seven. If you actually played last year, uh, this year's 7.7 seven is actually last year's 6.6. Six, six. But if you didn't play last year's COD, then this doesn't matter to you. But I would say go for 7.7. Seven, seven. Anything between 6 and 8 is probably the sweet spot in this game. That's what most pros are playing right now as well. So definitely go for 7.7. Seven, seven. For these three, um, just default. If you play flipped, you can keep this on. It's honestly personal preference. Controller vibration, make sure you have this off. Same with trigger effect, you don't want any unnecessary haptics, it's just going to put you off in game. For the dead zone inputs, I'm actually going to stop on this screen so I can show you mine. So for my left stick min, I've gone for 4, same for my right stick min as well. If you have a controller that has stick drift, I would bump this up past 10 until you don't see any more, or even 210. For my left stick max, I've actually gotten this on 65. For the left stick max, you actually want it between 60 and 70 because this is actually going to be the stick you're going to be using for movement so you don't want to be putting in too much input so your movement will be a lot more fluid for your right stick max i've gone for 90 and then for my l2 and r2 i believe that's lt and rt for xbox you're going to want this on zero because you literally want next to no input when you're aiming and firing your guns you'll be able to do it so much quicker than before so that's it for the dead zone inputs now moving on to the aiming section so you want to hit aim and advanced settings these two here just default so hit this uh, this is on gradual so this is just default this is default as well aim response curve type you're going to want this on dynamic as it's going to make you the most snappy when aiming onto a target literally all the pros use this so it's quite a big setting and then just have this on one for custom sensitivity per zoom turn this on hit show more for the first two have 0.8 i feel like Point eight is really good for tracking opponents. It just makes it so much easier if they're like moving around, especially with like the only movement on this as well. So I've gone for point eight for the first two and then all the rest, just have it on one. Obviously you're gonna want target aim assist on if you're playing on controller, otherwise you're just trolling. For both of these settings, keep it default. For tactical sprint assist, you're gonna actually want this on. So click on this and then hit tactical sprint assist. Once you've done that, hit show more. And where it says sprint assist delay, make sure this is all the way turned down to zero. So there's no delay when you're trying to activate your sprint assist. Mantle assist, you want this off. Crouch assist, off. Corner slice. This setting is basically, you see where you're aiming around the corner, your gun kind of tilts to the side. That's basically what that setting is. Me personally, I have it off as I feel like it's unnecessary on this game because from the enemy's POV, you're actually not even going to be tilted. You're going to just, your character will just be like normal. Like you won't be to the side in any way so i just find it pointless so i have this off personally for slide test dive behavior i've actually gone for hybrid if you're someone that likes to dive hybrid is definitely the best you don't want tap to slide because with tap to slide there's actually a delay because the game basically has to decide whether you're going to slide or dive so naturally there's going to be a delay there if you're someone that's not really interested in diving if you're like an ar player then just go for slide only However, me personally, I prefer hybrid, despite the fact I'm an AR player. For automatic airborne mantle, have this off. This can be really annoying if on. I don't know if you guys have had it where you're in a gunfight and you might accidentally mantle something. This is the setting that does that, so make sure you have this off. Make sure you have sprint restore and slide maintain sprint. This will make your game feel way less clunky when moving around the map, so make sure both of these are on.
parachute automatic behavior have this off it's not going to matter uh, mantle cancel reload on once you've done that guys hit movement advanced settings and then for this you're actually going to want your single touch sprint on the reason why i have this on personally is because you do save a lot of money on controllers because you don't have to keep constantly clicking in your left stick to activate like a sprint so in my opinion i would have this on you will save yourself a lot of money on controllers uh, plunging underwater just have free it's not going to really matter and then for sprinting door bash just have this on what should on that guys moving on to the combat section so most of this is just personal preference like the finishing move so just keep all this default armor plate behavior just have apply it all doesn't really matter uh once you've like went over all this go to combat advanced settings and you see once you're on here where it says interact slash reload behavior i've actually gone for tap to reload but if you're someone that's really flashy you might want prioritize interact but the reason why i have tap to reload is so that i don't accidentally keep picking up different weapons when playing an online match sprint cancels reload have this off and then all these three here just default right guys moving on to the graphic section now so if you have a monitor that supports 120 hertz make sure you have this on gamma such brightness this is just personal preference it depends what monitor you have for eco mode preset make sure you have this off because you don't want any unnecessary use of power consumption so yeah have that off for quality world motion blur off weapon motion blur off depth of field off fidelity fx cast on uh for the fidelity fx cast strength i would have anything between maybe 70 to 80 if you're on console because you can actually lose frames if you have it on 100 that's what i found out recently and i've even seen lunchtime say something about this as well so i've gone for 70 but maybe if you're on pc bump this up to like even 90 or 100 for on-demand texas streaming i've gone for minimal the reason why i have minimal is because i feel like this can actually mess up internet sometimes like you might get packet bursts and stuff like that so if you don't want any of that or you want to avoid it just have minimal and then for the view so my fov is 105 i would say anything between 100 to 105 and multiplayer is a sweet spot and another thing as well make sure you're not playing 120 fov on controller as you can lose aim assist ads field of view affected weapon field of view wide third person this doesn't matter just have it whatever you want default for the first person camera movement you want at least 50 percent third person ain't gonna matter inverted flashbang i actually have this on the reason why i have this on is because instead of when you get like flashed or stunned you just get blinded because it's so bright um it's actually going to be like a much much darker dimmed image if you're someone that has trouble with like your eyes then i would recommend inverted flashbang for the audio settings um you're going to want the master game volume on 100 hit show more once you've done that Gameplay music volume, personal preference, me personally, I have it on either 0 or 10. Dialogue volume, you're going to want this on 50 because you don't want the characters to be too loud in game. Effects volume, 100%, you want this on 100. And cinematic music volume, have this on 0. And then you see this setting here, this is actually something they implemented this year where it's actually pay to win audio, which is crazy. Like I feel like they need to make everyone's audio good before they can even do this. So for advanced headphone mode, I have this off because I'm not buying this pay to win audio. Like me personally, I don't think it's worth it. But if you're someone that has the money there, then I would recommend this. For the audio mix, if you play on console, go for tryout mix. However, if you're on PC, I've heard Sucker Punch is the best. So go for that. Mono audio, I've got this off. That's just the default. If you're a content creator, you might want to have this muted. Um, asymmetrical hearing compensation I've actually got this on because you know how you get them like subtle like audio cues in game like for example say it could be like wind or something in the map basically this would just get turned down so I have this on uh, for this section here reduce tonight sound I have this on basically what this is is when you get like hit by a concussion grenade it has that like ringing noise this basically eliminates it entirely so I've got this on and for the interface settings guys for the server latency i would have this on because it's always good to see your ping in game this will be displayed um, in the top left corner and then these two are personal preference if you want to see a packet loss or clock readability i've just left this on default have a little mess around with this and see what's best for you for the safe area guys you want to basically have this as minimized as possible so it makes seeing your hud so much easier for the gameplay hud you're gonna want your minimap shape on square so you can see more of the map 
compass type have this off let's be honest i don't think anyone's using this compass so it's just pointless having it on your screen just takes up room as well for player names full name for the crosshair this is actually a new thing they added this year where you can actually change the crosshair color i've actually gone for cyan as i feel like the eyes register it quicker i don't know why just me personally but two colors i would recommend would either be cyan or green but if you're not really too bothered about the color just keep this on default but the most important setting is the crosshair make sure the crosshair is on center dot this will make centering so much easier and then for all of this here guys just leave it on default anyway youtube that's it for today's video i really hope these settings make you feel more comfortable so you can strive in game see you on ranked my guys